Okay, so from Indian side, good afternoon to all of you. Today, I am going to share some of our works on green synthesis of hierarchical structure, organic inorganic nano hybrid on cotton fabric suitable for antimicrobial and oil water separation application. So before going to discuss uh, of, on my, uh, our work, I would like to introduce our institute. Our in institute is Central Glass and Ceramic Research Institute located at Kolkata, whose head office is at Delhi under the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research CSIR. And it has, it has 37 laboratories all over India. Now, in our institute, in our group, what we are doing presently, we are developing various types of functional thin films or coatings, among which tin doped indium oxide for as a transparent electrode and heat reflecting thin films for different applications. And we are also texturing the film by soft lithography for advancing the applications. We are also making various types of thin film photo catalyst. And today I will discuss the hydrophobic, super hydrophobic and antibacterial coatings on cotton fabric. Among the other thin films, we already developed anti-reflective come hydrophobic coatings on solar cover glass. And this glass has been used for making solar panels and we utilize and we already installed in our rooftop to enhance the power output. We seen that the uh, enhancement of efficiency occurs at one to 1.5 percent. These are the other features of the module. Now we also developed anti-reflective cam super hydrophobic coating on radiation shielding window glass, and we developed indigenously in India, drain coating uh, equipment where we can coat up to 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter into 100 millimeter size radiation shielding window glass, having the enhanced visibility and also having the uh, uh, gamma ray resistance property up to 10 to the power five rad. Now coming to another type of anti-reflection coating with high laser damage threshold on quartz glass with enhanced transmission at NIR region at 1054 nanometer for application of neodymium phosphate laser for high energy uh, lasers. Now coming to the bulk nanomaterials, different types of bulk nanomaterials we are developing among which the tin of indium oxide foam having the radar absorbing property, chemical sensor application for nickel oxide foam and graphene based metal, metal oxide or polymer nanocomposites for as a photocatalyst, photo electrocatalyst, cancer cell imaging application, lithium ion battery or sensor application. Now today I will confine my talk by giving some general introduction where self-cleaning oil water separation and antimicrobial coatings are there. And then I will share some of our research works on hierarchical structure, silver, copper oxide modified, HDMS, hexa, decai, trimethoxicillin, nanohybrid on cotton fabric, and its different kinds of advanced properties for antimicrobial and oil water separation applications. Then I will conclude my talk. Now, what is the hierarchy and hierarchical structure? I can give one example for an office, like a research institute where director is the head of the institute, then other scientists, technical officers, and also administrative officers are there. So in every employee, there is a hierarchical in structure and hierarchy is there. But in case of materials, the materials hierarchy reflects on its relative in density, rho by rho zero, where rho is the bulk density and rho is the density of the structure. Therefore, in 
among the materials hierarchy, three different forms of hierarchy in existing structural hierarchy, transport and compositional hierarchy. And these hierarchical structures can be man-made or can be naturally occurring. If we consider leaf, lung, blood circulation system, all these are called naturally occurring hierarchical structures. And among the man-made hierarchical structures, nano-building blocks like 0D, 1D, 2D, 3D are there. Now coming to the strategies for fabrication of hierarchical structures, one can adopt top-down method involving physics and engineering where lithography, electro spinning, template-based synthesis are there, and also bottom-up process involving chemical processes or chemistry, where spontaneous growth process is most important. We are at, we adopted in this work here. Coming to the nano hybrids, this is a composite where synergic effect of each of the components in nano dimensions can develop new properties with advanced for advanced applications. And it can be categorized in two uh, uh, types. Type one is class one, where the presence of weak interactions between different phases and components are there. That means the weak Van der Waals forces, hydrogen bonding, or weak electrostatic force of interaction is existing between the components which held together. And in class two nano hybrids, the presence of strong chemical interactions is existing between the phases or components with covalent bonds. Therefore, this type of nano hybrids has enormous applications in photocatalysis, electrochemical, electro uh, photocatalytic application, corrosion protection, and biomedical application. Now coming to different types the today's is most important uh, in my talk is a super hydrophobic coating and this super hydrophobic coating has huge applications starting from solar panels as anti reflective hydrophobic or cell cleaning coatings wind cells textiles antibacterial antiviral blood repellent and so on and so forth and this super hydrophobic surface to develop the super hydrophobic surface, there are basically two parameters are involved. One is hierarchical surface roughness created from the hierarchical structures on the surface, low ener surface energy material, and this uh, surface can be generated by means of sol gel process or hydrothermal reaction, electro deposition, and so on and so forth. And that can be deposited by several uh, substrates like textiles, glass, wood, metal mesh, and this process has challenges like biocompatibility. If the material is biocompatible, requirement is biocompatible, uh, biomaterial is required, durability, mechanical and chemical stability. Now, green synthesis is now most important. This conference is basically uh, devoted in the green synthesis methods and green materials. And therefore, this green synthesis is a method is involved basically chemical and physical methods where the environmentally benign, environmentally friendly solvents and reagents are used here. Here is the details of different types of methods and green reagents, green solvents, green template is described here. I am not going details because of the time limit. And here, the prospect of the green synthesis is anomal, starting from mechanistic aspects, exploration of new biological agents and finding innovative and cost-effective biological, physical, and chemical methods. And that will create huge revenue towards a wide range of applications, including metal and metal oxide based hierarchical structure nanomaterials. If we consider the deposition technique, there are several techniques one can adopt, physical vapor, chemical vapor deposition, but we adopted here, sol gel dipping process and other sol gel processes are spinning, draining or meniscus. Coming to the hydrophobic surface, it is well known to all of us. It is known as lotus effect, where the static water contact angle must be greater than 150 degree and sliding angle less than 10 degree. And there are the natural super hydrophobic surfaces starting from the lotus leaf to water triders to butterfly wings and so on and so forth. 
and this uh, that can, this super hydrophobic surfaces can be generated by different weighing models and among these models one is uh, kasi boxster model which considers in homogeneous surface roughness and that will generate from the hierarchical structures on the surface coming to the uh, coming to the surface mo modification to get the hierarchical structure for generating super hydrophobic uh, surface one can create morphology by and also the chemical structure or composition can be changed with enhanced mechanical chemical physical and optical properties such as wear resistance corrosion resistance biocompatibility weightability and so on so forth the strategy mainly three types one is chemical modification of the surface another is surface patterning by uh, soft lithography or other means uh, and creating surface roughness now coming to the self cleaning application self cleaning can be possible by two ways one can create super hydrophilic surface which is a slow process water can goes beneath the contaminant and hydrophobic surface it is a speedy process and water takes up contaminants and remove from the surface of the substrate now oil water separation it requires super oleophilic structure where the so uh, static water contact and uh, static uh, oil contact tangent is greater than equal to 150 degree with sliding angle 10 degree now coming to the uh, antimicrobial activity if we create the super hydrophobic surface it will certainly create or accelerate the antimicrobial activity because the layer uh, uh, of metastable air trapped into the hierarchical uh, structures containing the voids and that will reduce the addition of bacteria. And in presence of the bactericidal and fungicidal components like silver, zinc oxide, copper nanoparticles or antibiotics, or in some cases, non-metallic nanoparticles, including chitosan, graphene, or reduced graphene oxide, it can kill the bacteria and make the material as an antibacterial uh, agent. As you know, cotton fabric has several advantages. I will not go into the details, but one I should uh, discuss about the why transition metal is very important. Transition metal oxide is very important because transition metal oxide can create hierarchical structures and from which we can get the hierarchical surface roughness. And surface hydroxyl groups can easily modify it with low energy silanes, fatty acids, thiols, amines, and form easily form hydrogen bonds with the cellulose. Now, the I am coming to our, I am sharing our work, uh, that is the silver nickel, uh, silver cuprous oxide nanohybrid to fabricate it, the general fabrication strategy, the detailed fabrication strategy is depicted here. We use Q, uh, copper acetate and silver nitrate as an ingredients of copper and silver respectively. And it is a step one and in step two, we use neem extract, uh, abstract, uh, neem uh, uh, extract. And this neem ex extract has been prepared uh, by boiling the neem leaves uh, collected from the, uh, collected from the uh, natural neem trees and boil it at 100 degrees centigrade. Then the next step is the addition of sodium hydroxide solution in a measurable quantity. Then the th fourth step is the immersion of the cotton fabric, which is dried, cleaned and dried uh, into the vessel. And it is a high, under hydrothermal condition at 100 degrees centigrade for eight hour. We can get the silver cuprous oxide nano hybrid. And this further modification with the hexa deca tetra methoxy silen we can get the super hydrophobic surface of cotton uh, fabric uh, having the silver cuprous oxide uh, uh, nano composite here the chemical bonding or complexation with the metal ions is depicted with the phytochemicals of the uh, of neem uh, leaves is showing here and uh, uh, say also cellulose is, uh, so, so, uh, is given here, which can uh, form hydrogen bond with the metal ions. And uh, also uh, it is confirmed from the FTR spectra 
the prison who is who are the presence of organics in the acn that is the silver cuprous oxide nano hybrid is possible here by uh, the characteristic peak of 2964 centimeter inverse and the presence of pop cuo stretching frequency observed at 800 centimeter inverse and 632 centimeter inverse now coming to the phase structure both uh, the uh, silver and the cuprous oxide is cubic in uh, cubic phase now coming to surface morphology we studied the surface morphology of the coated surface by means of FeACM studies. The FeACM image of the pristine cotton shows it is smooth, but after deposition of silver cuprous oxide, the surface is very rough. And when it is the Ehlers figure shows that it consists of organ uh, pipe mud, pipe mud, drawers, wash like structure. It is a natural. Uh, organ pipe mud, Dobber's nest, and these are the synthesized that is consisting of this uh, 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 the uh, tube-like structures, uh, hollow tube-like hollow uh, structure, and the size is two to three point five micron. The presence of silver and copper is also confirmed from the FPSM EDS EDX curve. It is important to note that without mixing the both ingredients we could we couldn't generate this type of structure uh, it is confirmed from here that is in presence of only copper acetate or silver nitrate the fesm structure shows that we can't get this type of hierarchical structure this hierarchical structure formation depends upon various parameters one first parameter is the copper to silver ratio in the precursor solution and reaction temperature and lastly the nature of substrate these are most important parameters there are other minor parameters are there i am not discussing here this so first is the copper to silver ratio in precursor solution where starting from copper is to silver one is to point one and uh, uh, then uh, here it shows that uniform spherical structures on the surface of the coating is there and if we increase the silver to 0.5 the surface is agglomerated is not a definite feature is there but when it is uh, uh, copper silver is 1 is to 2 it uh, mostly agglomerated features with cauliflower like structures is often but uh, uh, we have optimized this composition to copper is to silver equal to 1 is to 1 atomic ratio now reaction temperature is also influencing on the surface uh, morphology of the coating at 60 degree centigrade only the lumps of the aggregated structures is visible when it increases to 90 degree centigrade the tube like structure formation is occur with these are hollow tubes and also at 120 degree centigrade the tubes broken tubes are found and here influence of substrates also one of the major factor to get their definite structure hierarchical structure as we adopted the hydrothermal synthesis process so without substrate means the particles which deposited under the vessel uh, not on the substrate uh, that is on the cotton it shows that uh, there is no feature uh, or any morphology of the material when is deposited on the wood the cauliflower like structures is found but on ITO substrate, which basically a cubic bixivite structure, he shows the uh, square like structure. Coming to the TEM microstructure, one can see the nanoparticles of silver and copper oxide is uh, present. The size varies from 5 nanometer to 25 nanometer. The signature of cuprous oxide and silver is characterized from the HRTM image of the sample. Now, stability of the coatings on cotton fabric, we studied its mechanical property, its washability, immersion in alkali, and immersion in acid. Here, for in the case of SCN, that is without modification of HDTMS, hexamethyl tetra, hexamethyl, hexadecyl trimethoxycellin, which is a low energy material with hydrophobic character. And here we see 50 cycles of abrasion, 20 washing cycles, and after immersion into hot alkali for a certain time, the surface remains the same. 
but in acid immersion, the surface that destroy, is damaged. That is the presence of the hierarchical structure is not found in case of SCN. In case of SCNS, that is after modified with HDTMS, we see that all these uh, 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 studied in all these cases, that is abrasion, washing, immersion in alkali and acid, the structures remain intact. And we also may measure the essential strength that is cotton fabric nearly 15.3 megapascal, SCN 13 uh, megapascal and SCNS 12.5 megapascal. That is with increasing the layer, the stem cells a little bit decrease. And as HDMS is soft in nature, the stem cell stretch is little bit lower than the SCN. Now coming to uh, the growth process and the mechanism of formation of this nano composite. We varied the time uh, of the uh, synthesis process. And here we can see at a two hour of duration of the synthesis process, the uh, spherical nature of the particles are formed. And four hours, the uh, Doffler, uh, more Doffler like nest like wash structure is formed. And at six hour, it is uh, the concentration is more and more, but at higher time, that is uh, 14 hour, the structures become cracked. And uh, uh, they, they, that is why we uh, optimize the time to eight hour. Here is the formation, chemical reactions, which forms, uh, which shows the formation of silver and cuprous oxide. Here is the possible growth mechanism. Actually, in this growth mechanism, one can see that after addition of alkali, both cuprous oxide and silver oxides are, silver hydroxides are formed. And a treatment of 100 degree centigrade temperature, nuclei of cuprous oxide and silver may form. And who is by means of Oswald ripening process and transportation, it forms the uh, aggregated structure. And through the Kirkindal effect, the Kirkindal effect shows how the pura structure, how the hollow structure can form. And in, that, in this case, the density variations and difference in diffusion rates of the generated particles that is silver and cuprous oxide, and also the silver and copper ions take major roles uh, to play in this, to show the Kirkindal effect. And also uh, in addition to that, copper ions diffuse outward and silver ions diffuse inward. The difference in this orientation of diffusion can also enhance to form the hollow structure of the hollow uh, nature of the tube making the hierarchical porosity and hierarchical structure. Here we have measured the surface roughness by means of A from the AFM images. Here the pristine cotton uh, shows the less surface roughness. It is about 15 nanometer and uh, it increases to nearly 54 nanometer for ACN due to formation of hierarchical structure. And it nearly same 54 nanometer as SCNS after deposition, after modification with AGTMS. Here is the proof of underwater super oleophilic nature uh, of SCN uh, uh, sample where chloroform is used as a heavy um, uh, oil. And here in air, super hydrophobic nature of the cotton fabric uh, of uh, cotton fabric sample of SCNS, which shows the in air super hydrophobic nature. Now, the super hydrophobicity and self cleaning ability of the samples of SCNS has already been tested and it shows we uh, dye, methylene blue dye is uh, dissolved in water and uh, put uh, upon the slide with some dust of the uh, methylene blue. And after tilting both uh, the, the solution adhered the, with the uh, methylene blue is cleaned without touching the surface of the coated cotton fabric indicated that the shampoo has self cleaning ability. And he, these uh, pictures, which is the pictures of the water contact uh, angle, uh, water droplet 
during the uh, measurement of water contact angle at various conditions, 50 cycles of sandpaper, that is 20 cycles of lab laundering, exposure to alkali and acidic solutions, one hour abrasion. So all these shows the uh, super, uh, uh, water contact angle above 150 degree, indicating that super hydrophobicity is still there after this treatment. Now, coming to the oil water separation. In this oil water separation, we uh, observe the switchable weighting behavior of S, both SCN and SCNS. The SCN is super hydrophilic and also it shows the underwater super oleophilic, which is very much ideal for separation of light oil from oil water mixer. And is, uh, whereas in the SCNS, it is super hydrophobic and super oleophilic in nature, it is also very much uh, suitable for separation of heavy oil water, uh, heavy oil from oil water mixer. Here, uh, it is important to note that we use hexane as light oil and chloroform as heavy oil. And the presence of nanomicro voids in the hierarchical structure can trap one liquid and prevent filtration of other liquid with opposite polarity. With this basis, we have tested here. Here is the, this part is basically for SCN sample and this part is basically for SCNA sample. Here we can see the uh, uh, separation efficiency, which is measured from this applying this equation and we obtained up to 100 cycles of the separation process its efficiency remained 97.5 percent and in case of chloroform that is heavy oil its separation efficiency is nearly 98.2 percent we also measured the flux and here for what for scn water flux it is four to six seven to 5356 liter per meter square hour and it is higher, uh, it is lower than the chloroform where 75182, 8221 liter per meter square per hour we obtained from our experiment. Here, uh, the last part of my talk, the antimicrobial activity. Basically, antimicrobial activity can be studied by measuring antimicrobial anti-addition or emerging into this material in microbial suspension. And this contact killing of micro, microorganisms can be possible by major three factors. In case metal, it should be oxidized easily. In case of metal oxide, it should have high solubility and metal ions should have a soft ionic character. On this basis, we studied the biocidal activity by seeking flux method uh, where the 10 to the power 6 colony formation unit, that is CFU per ml, in buffer solution of 0.5 molar potassium dihydrogen phosphate as a pH of 7.2. Now coming to the microbial reduction and its optical images of growth reduction with time is shown here in both the samples of SCN and SCNS. SCN shows that the uh, uh, we use uh, representative bacteria H or E and E. coli as gram positive and gram negative bacteria and C. albicans as fungi. And we see, we, we have, uh, we observe that SCN shows 99.99% uh, microbial colony reduction within two hours for SCN sample and for C. albicans. 100% reductions observed at four hours duration. In case of SCNS, we have seen that 100% reduction for all the microbes, that is S. aureus, E. coli, and C. albicans is seen. That means SCNS is better uh, micro, uh, better uh, material as antibacterial material than SCNS. The, uh, why it is happened? I am coming to my next slide that we have studied the microbial reduction and uh, in case um, after uh, emerging the sample into the colloid um, uh, suspension of the microbial agent uh, for 30 days. So sample names are here, SCN30, SCNS30. 
And here we see for ACN30 that has without HD, uh, HDTMS modification, the reduction is below 100%. But it is remain 100% after 30 days of immersion. These are the pictures which shows the colony formation and without colony formation of the sample at different times interval. And here is the long-term sustainability of antimicrobial activity that found in ACNS sample, which shows 99% reduction in all the microbes used here, E. coli, S. aureus, and C. albicans uh, after 90 days of immersion. And uh, so why it, has, it is showing uh, long-term sustainability of antimicrobial activity? Because uh, we deposited HDMS uh, coating upon the silver cuprous oxide uh, super, uh, hierarchical surface. Then uh, it prevent uh, the uh, diffusion or release of copper and silver ions. That is the slow release of copper and silver ions in SCNS owing to HDMS coating shows the long-term sustainability of antimicrobial activity in the sample. Now the durability of antimicrobial activity we also studied. In case of SCN, 90 days its uh, average reduction is below 60%, but in case of SCNS, it is 99.9% after uh, 90 days also, as I already discussed. And uh, now uh, in considering uh, to the ecological effects and health impacts, we studied the copper and silver release kinetics. If you see in case of copper release, that in case of SCN, the first release up to 30 days is occur, then it is a little bit saturated. But in case of SCNS, the copper release is systematic. And uh, here is also same in case of silver. That is the copper and silver ions release in SCNS is much less in SCN due to the coating, with the HDMS coating in SCNS. And uh, it is important to note that after 24 hours, the release of copper is uh, 0, 0 0.000, 000 four milligram per liter per centimeter square, whereas silver is 0.401 milligram per liter per centimeter square. But uh, in case of who recommended acceptable limit in drinking water, copper is 0 0.05 milligram per liter per centimeter square and silver is 0 0.1 milligram per liter per centimeter square. So this uh, up to, uh, at least up to 24 hours, of these uh, uh, hours, the release of copper and silver is within the acceptable limit of uh, uh, the recommended uh, 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 recommended uh, uh, recommended nature or acceptable limit of the ions. Now I am concluding uh, from my talk by saying that hierarchical structure silver cuprous oxide modified with HDTMS coatings fabricated on cotton fabric. Uh, can be possible by green synthesis method. And uh, this hierarchical silver cuprous oxide looks like unique mud dropper wash nest like structure. And it's a suitable super weightability that is suitable for oil on demand, oil water separation. Oil water separation efficiency up to 99% is observed for mixtures of light and heavy oils. And it shows the excellent reusability also. It exhibits excellent self-cleaning ability towards solid and liquid contaminants. And also it shows superior antimicrobial activity due to synergic effect of hierarchical structures and the super hydrophobicity of the materials. Now, uh, I acknowledge uh, we thanks our director for encouraging, encar for our encouragement. Of course, my students, especially Dr. Malavi Set, who is presently at Manchester Palam University doing postdocs and sponsors like Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, Department of Science and Technology, and also our institutes, Central Glass and Ceramic Research Institute. And thankfully, I acknowledge our colleagues at Facility Glass Division. And lastly, but not the least, 
the organizers of this Green Chemistry 2022 for inviting me to sharing some of our works. This data uh, that I have presented here is already published in several SCI journals and book chapters. These are tabulated here. One can refer these uh, papers also. And lastly, thank you for your kind attention. Safe, safe, stay safe and well.